and I went to church with her every Sunday or Wednesday or whenever she felt like going uh, till I was about eating. oh repeat okay okay I was born into a Catholic family actually my mother was Catholic mm -hmm. and my father was an atheist and uh, I went to church every Sunday with my mother all of us kids did we had nine children and my father would always stay home and you know talk about how God didn't exist so we had both sides there and I would go every Sunday and on this you know masses like for Christmas and things like that but I I never really understood it and then when I was about 16 I left home and um, actually that's I'm not going to even talk about that story but I left home at 16 um, I returned home about 19 and uh, I had two children before I was Muslim and then I moved to an, a small town away from my family and I met a woman from Iraq she was a, a refugee from the 1991 war in Iraq and she lived just upstairs from me and her son would always come down and play and his name was Muhammad and so uh, I became friends with her and I asked her I went to her house one day and I was out with her and I was wearing a short dress it was uh, mid thigh and I said how can, you know aren't you uncomfortable wearing all that those clothes and that head covering and everything and she said you're the one who keeps t tugging at your dress you know keeps pulling it down and I was actually very uncomfortable I was I felt naked I kept pulling my dress down and I didn't realize I was doing that so um, anyway she started teaching me she gave me a copy of the Quran and I started reading it and I I read it and read it and read it and I debated but I wouldn't debate with a schlock I never would debate with her because she was my friend so I would talk to some other people and I would debate with them about the, the Quran and I would always bring the passage the men are the maintainers of the women uh, blah 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 you know same that <laughs> and they you know anyway so I just I did debate Islam for about three years and then um, you know, I kept going back. I didn't want to give up my ways. You know, I I like to do the things that we're not supposed to do. So I didn't want to give up my ways. But finally, I realized that you know, Islam was when she taught me about the Torah and the Zabur and the uh, Injil and the Quran, and she explained to me the continuance, and she explained to me the prophets and why I was putting Jesus in front of all the other prophets that were equally important and etc. And so I finally uh, reverted to Islam, and her nine-year-old son, Muhammad, actually taught me how to pray. And I went to the halal store, actually, and they were Sunni Muslims. And so I started asking them, what was the difference between the Shia and Sunni? And they started t teaching me about, you know, the Sunni religion, and they told me that Muta was absolutely wrong, and that they were cursing their companions, and all those things, and I was actually wearing a, a necklace of Ali. They had given me a necklace of Ali, and I would wear it everywhere. They said, oh, this man is very important, and blah, blah, blah. So, I didn't know, you know, I was just learning about Islam. I was really just learning, and learning how to pray, and learning everything, so I was pretty naive about everything. So, I talked to the. I, I actually got online and started talking to some the Sunni Muslims, and I started asking them about. You know, they said, "Isn't don't you think this is you know wrong? And don't you think that is wrong?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know, it doesn't make any sense," and and all that. So I ended up uh, reverting to to be a Muslim, a true Muslim, Alhamdulillah. And actually, I let them. You know make their own mind up they would still went to church with my mother and they were God, how old were they at that time I keep I told the story before and I always forget how old they were but I think they were out when I converted it was 97 six and seven I think and so I let them uh, just go to church with my mom if they wanted to and I you know taught them about Islam I didn't want to force them to be Muslim and I didn't want my mom to say you know you're forcing them you know you're brainwashing them or whatever she would say and they ended up reverting by themselves and now they're 17 and 18 and they reverted you know my daughter wears hijab and my son goes to the masjid all the time he goes on uh, Haruj with the other men and I just love it I just love Islam it totally changed my life um, 
another thing about when I was Shia, they would actually say things like um, Abu Bakr uh, pushed um, Fatima into the door and she lost her baby, something like that. And Haruj, like the, you know, they go across to other to other cities and teach about Islam with the brothers, yeah. So, um, yeah, they taught us that, they told me that Sunni Muslims drink alcohol, that they prayed with their shoes on, um, though the women didn't wear hijab. Uh, they told us. They told us all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. And one stranger, if you were Shia, you totally understand what I'm talking about. Am I right? <laughs> yes. So anyway, okay. So that's my story. Now my children are Muslim, and uh, they were born Cody and Brianna, and now they are Imad and Asia. And that's my story. Assalamu alaikum. Did I jump anyone? Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Did I jump anyone, by the way? I could not see the Hayakalaya uh, sister. Right. That was uh, a, a quick story, sister. Not so fast. <laughs> not so fast. You're not going nowhere. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, describe to us what was it like before Islam? after you took Shahada, immediately after you took Shahada for the first two, three, four days and and now okay, that's the first question can you write them down? you want to write them down inshallah? I have like three questions for you Sister Muslima, are you, are you there? can you write them down inshallah? Yeah, okay. Take the mic, inshallah. Take the mic, inshallah. Answer that on the mic. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, assalamu alaikum. So you want to know what it was like before? Um, you mean what was I doing or how I felt about? I, I don't know what the question is exactly. Life. Okay. Well, um, at 19, um, at 19 I actually met... Um, my childhood friend and we were together we were not married we had our two children and oh my view of things okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> so my view of things were I didn't believe in God I had went from Christianity I, I knew that was lies so I just didn't believe in God I didn't believe in anything I did what I wanted and I didn't fear anything I thought everything was okay, and you know, my mom would say, "You were born naked, so there's no problem being naked." You know, so I don't know. We just had a weird kind of a yeah. That's my mom still. She'll walk outside and mow the lawn in her bathing suit. It's, it's embarrassing. But um, anyway, so yours too. <laughs> I wonder how many moms are like that. You know, they don't care. They just don't care. Oh yeah, she used to walk through the house, and anyway. Anyway, yeah, she was free, spirited hippie when she was younger, and you know all that stuff. So, um, and then let's see, my view of life. My view of life was I really didn't care about anything. I just did what I wanted. You know, my kids saw drinking, or they saw you know boyfriend and girlfriend, or you know, I didn't care. I, it was normal. It was fine. And then after I became a Muslim. Well, even before I became a Muslim, actually, I had met Muslim people, so I started changing myself all that three years that I was. Um, anyone who believes in Christ and God the Father cannot accept Islam. <laughs> anyone who believes in Christ and God will be a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. They will become a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. So anyway... Um, Okay, so after I became a Muslim, actually my whole life changed because I had to get used to this whole other life and this whole other culture. And softball chick, you're out of here. Oh, somebody already got her? Good, okay. Anyway, um, so afterwards... My whole life changed. Oh, definitely. I definitely was a um, 
I'm trying to think of words, see, and I have a high fever, and I can't think of words. So, let's see what, what I was thinking of. Afterwards, I was more modest. I was more... I didn't talk to people. I especially didn't talk to men. My, what changed in my life? Well, I had a lot more respect for myself. I had a better understanding of God. I had a way better understanding of the prophets. Um, I felt truly at peace, you know. I felt like, oh, I finally found the truth, which is, you know, all my life I never found, I, I didn't understand Christianity. And now that I'm a Muslim, I understand Christianity better than I did when I was a Christian. I understand it much better. And I try to teach my mother and I try to teach my family, but, you know, only Allah can guide them and... You know, my mom even comes in and says, you know, don't listen to those people on Pal Talk so much because you're going to get brainwashed. <laughs> and she said, you know, you don't want them to teach you. You don't want them to teach you about Islam. And I said, Mom, I teach people there. You know, she doesn't realize that I've been Muslim for 14 years now. And, you know, she thinks I'm coming back or something. I don't know. But she thought because I moved back to my hometown that I would become Christian again. And it didn't happen. And so she's, she's upset. So anyway... Anything else you want to know? Yeah. Thank you for your add-up, sister. Barakallah I thank you for your time. Uh, Ned, you're very welcome to be with us. Just uh, Can we at least respect the sister? She's telling the story of why she became Muslim. Allahu Akbar, a no Muslim. Uh, Ned, would love to discuss with you. Uh, you ask a beautiful message, a beautiful question about what was wrong with the message of uh, Jesus. Nothing wrong with it. It's a perfect message. We love Jesus. Just all, all of us would love to talk to you after the story, okay? We can discuss the message of Jesus alayhi salam. And by the way, while we're uh, finishing, finalizing the story, I want you to go uh, on the internet and search for uh, 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 your original book that Jesus uh, brought you. Once you find it, then we'll, all, we'll both discuss the message of Jesus alayhi salam. Okay. Uh, Sister Muslima Amira. Sister Muslima Amira. Barakallah fiki ya Rabbi. The question uh, is as follows. Tell, tell us about your family and friends. Once you reverted to Islam, it must have been a big shock to all the people around you, right? Obviously. Tell us about them. I mean, you did mention your mom. Uh, she instructed you to stay away from pal talk. They will poison your head. They will brainwash you. The same thing you said about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They used to say, do not listen to this man. He will change you. He will curse you. He will, uh, he's, a, he's a magician. Once you listen to him, you become a Muslim like him. Subhanallah. It never, cha it never changes. And yani, Subhanallah, the Quran gave the perfect example about these people. Tell us, who did you lose? You, you, I, I'm sure you lost a lot of friends. And maybe family members as well. So, uh, if you can just add to that, Barakallah Fiki. The mic is yours. Okay, as alaykum. Um, actually, I didn't lose anyone. I didn't lose anyone. I'm a very strong woman. And if they don't accept me, then they don't accept me. They're going to stay away from me. I don't care. But, um, let's see, my mom, my dad, you know, he was um, an atheist, so he didn't really care. You know, he thought, uh, he didn't really say anything, actually. But um, I wouldn't come to Thanksgiving the first year. I said, I'm not going to come to Thanksgiving. This is a non-Muslim holiday, and, you know, I'm not going to celebrate any holidays anymore except the two Eids and, you know, etc. And, um... So my dad said, please come. He wanted to see me. Please pass since then. And I said, okay, but I'm going to wear my hijab. And, you know, everybody needs to accept it or I'm just going to go back home. And so I went there and my whole family came in very accepting because my father probably had talked to them. And um, he was a very strong man. And so I walked in. Everybody was fine. I was wearing hijab. And my father said, this, one, this makes me want to cry, actually. But he said... You look so beautiful in that hijab. 
That's my first thing after I reverted. So I didn't lose anyone. My family and friends are very supportive. They're very supportive. And, you know, even though they don't agree with me, and I'm constantly, um, <laughs> my sister said, I came this last time, and she said, she was eating something that was pork, and I said, you know, <laughs> Teresa, some, and she said, please don't talk about pork. Please don't tell me anything about pork, because it was every time I talk about it, it makes her sick. So I said, okay, and I refrained from saying anything to her about it, but I didn't lose anyone, and if there was a few cousins, but they were far cousins, so... I could really care less about them. I really care less about anybody. Allah is the only thing I'm worried about. You know, Allah is the only thing that I, only deity that I want to please. And everybody else is secondary. If they don't accept me for who I am, then too bad for them. Um, I also have another story if I can tell you about a revert. Is that okay? Is it okay, Knight, if I tell another story about a friend of mine who reverted? Okay. I went to work at a security office at uh, the college that I go to, and uh, there was a woman there who was very cute. She was very nice. She was very polite and, and quiet, but she was she was just a beautiful girl, and she was having trouble with this guy that she had been dating for a long time, and he was just you know playing with her. So I started. Talk I came in in my hijab, of course, and. You know, I came and I started working there, and she asked, started asking me about Islam, and so I, you know, started to slowly, I didn't give her too much because I didn't want to overwhelm her, so I started just slowly teaching her about Islam and, and showing her videos of things and, you know, letting her slowly take her time to learn about Islam, so she started to ask me a lot more questions. Yeah, he was a jerk, the boyfriend, yeah. It was actually her baby's dad, and he, anyway. Yeah, he kept on, when he'd want to talk to her, he'd call, and when he didn't, and I was like, look, you know, you are a beautiful woman, and you don't need to take that stuff, and, you know, somebody has to appreciate you, etc. So, I um, would give her Islamic videos. That was the biggest thing, I think. And showing her the miracles in the Quran, the scientific proof, um, teaching her why Christianity was not right and how Islam makes more sense. And so then she started, you know, it took her about a year, I think. And then finally, her son, who was 13, his name was Xavier, he was learning too from my children. And he was, I think, 13. Yeah, he was 13 at the time. And he actually reverted before his mother. He took his shahada before his mother did, which I was just amazed, that boy. He, he's great. So anyway, and then she kept saying, I'm not sure. You know, she was a really strong Christian, actually. It's surprising that she reverted. But um, she was even in a, a complex of only Christians. You know, that's how Christian she was. So... Um, her son actually took shahada, and she she didn't say anything. She was like, okay, you know, if you believe it, then that's up to you. So about two weeks later, and I kept saying, Nancy, when are you going to take your shahada? You know, your son is beating you. And so finally she took her shahada, and now she's been uh, Muslim for one year. Um, one year. And she went with me to Egypt, and she met someone there, and they were married.